Greetings, my fellow stream lovers, sovereign thinkers. This is L3Z's podcast. My name is Craig Trans, meeting from the beautiful Swamp in Lagos, South Florida. And today's date is Friday, May 3rd, 2019. Yes, you hear some music in the background and all that. I am at Mount Turner Saloon, located at 10 South River, South River New Drive. Hold on, I hope I, I, hope I got that correct here. <laughs> Hold on here, folks. Yeah, so I'm um, at 10, um, 10 South New River Drive, east in the heart of Fort Lauderdale, downtown New River area. Cool little facility, a little history behind this place. It was actually used, before it became downtown, this actual building was used to ship in liquor, distilleries and so forth, during the Prohibition era of the 1920s. <laughs> But like I said, it's a cool place. They let me do my show here, and I thank them for that. So I always uh, support local shops, restaurants, and all that out of love. All right. I know I did talk about yesterday on um, addressing the disappointments I had with the Briar Sheriff and a few others. I might have to do that another time. There's a lot of stuff on my mind right now. So I listen to a show on what was going on with this anti-Semitism bill that got passed unanimously in the House and the Senate. Supposed to be signed under um, Governor DeSantis supposed to be on, is on his desk. I don't know if he's signing it or not. But won't be surprised because he they always talk about being pro-Israel. And like I tell them, it should be pro-Florida. And so it's unanimous. That means the Democrats voted for it too. And I find it's pretty startling. So I'm going to be looking at um, talking about House Bill 741, which is the anti-Semitism bill, which is guaranteed against Florida's Declaration of Rights. So I want to read this bill. Actually, I'm, gonna, I'm looking at this right here, and. Um, and it says here is um, H- HB 741 anti-Semitism, and uh, the main t- main idea is under the Education Committee, c- c- Criminal Justice Committee, and all that. Co-introducers Altman, uh, actually start written by Chris Fine and Casaro, introduced by Altman, Bird, Donalds, and co-introducers Fernandez, Bequin, Federal. I go on. I'll definitely leave the uh, link on here so you can check it out yourself. And it says here, anti-Semitism defines anti-Semitism that prohibits discrimination in Florida. K-20 public education based on religion requires public education institutions to consider anti-Semitism under certain instances of discrimination upon becoming law. So it, has, it was passed, last action was passed by the House on the 29th, I would say. And they did the same thing at the Senate. And I know the session, you know, that passed by the Senate unanimously, 40 to 0. And, of course, um, order in a row, HD 1011. And it was passed in the 11th by the House, 114 to 0, for the third time. So, I'm going to read this bill in its entirety. It's five pages long, so just kick back a little bit. And as it reads here at... As an acting act relating to anti-Semitism, amending statute 1000.05, which is a uh, Florida statute prohibiting discrimination in Florida 4K20 public education system based on religion, requiring a public K20 educational institution to take into certain consideration. Anti-Semitism under certain instances of discrimination, defining the term anti-Semitism, providing construction, amending S-1020.20, 1020, 1002.20, Florida statute, confirming provisions to changes made by the Act, providing an effect, um, effective date. And it says here, by being enacted by the state of uh, legislature of the state of Florida, Section 1, subsection 7 of section 1000.05, Florida statutes is remembered as subsections 8, 
paragraph A, B, C, and E of subsections 2 are amended, and a new subsection 7 is added to that section to read. 1000.05, discrimination against students and employees in Florida, K-20 public education system prohibited, equality access required. 2A, discrimination on the basis of race, ethnicity, national origin, gender, disability, religion, or marital status against a student or an employee in the state system of public K-20 education is prohibited. No person in the state shall, on the basis of race, ethnicity, national origin, or gender, disability, religion, or marital status, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subject to discrimination under any public 20.20-K-20 education program or activity or in any employment conditions or particles conducted by the public, education, the public educational institution that receives for, or benefits from federal or state financial instances. Be the criteria for admission to a program, of course, shall not have the effect of restricting access by persons of a particular race, ethnicity, natural origin, gender, disability. And this, I, they underline this constantly. Religion is underlined, okay? Or marital status. C, all public K-20 edu education classes shall be available to all students without, without regard to race, ethnicity, national origin, gender, disability, underline again, religion, or marital status. However, this is not intended to eliminate the provisions of programs designed to meet the needs of students with limited proficiency in English gifted students or with students with disabilities or programs tailored to students with specialized talents or skills. Guidance services, AE, guidance services, consent counseling services and financial instances services in the state, public K-20 education system shall be available to students equally. Guidance and counseling services, materials and promotional events shall stress access to academic career opportunities for students without regard to race, ethnicity, national origins, gender, disability, religion, or marital status. And this is now underlined. Okay, this all has been underlined, and I'll let you. Uh, I'll let. Uh, I'll, I'm going to read this here. It's subsection seven. A public K-20 educational institution must treat discrimination by students or employees or resulting from institutional policies motivated by, by any Semitic intent in an identical manner to discriminate discrimination motivated by race. For the purpose of this section, the term anti-Semitism includes a certain perception of the Jewish people. Okay, which may be expressed as hatred towards Jewish people. Rhetorical and physical manifestations of anti-Semitism directed toward a person, his or her property toward, or toward Jewish community institutions or religi religious facilities. This is very disturbing because if you really learn the definition of what Semites are, it's mainly from the whole Middle Eastern region. Okay, but they just use it for one particular group, special, sp um, special privileges, I would say, and it's not being go hating Jews or anything like that. That's completely irrelevant. I want to continue on here. A examples of anti-Semitism includes calling for aiding or justifying the killing or harming of Jews, often in the name of radical ideology or an extremist view of religion. It should be for anybody, okay, not just one particular group. Two, making medacious, dehumanizing, demonizing, or stereotypical allegations about Jews as such, or the power of Jews as a collective, especially, but not, not exclusively, the myth about a world Jewish conspiracy or of con Jews controlling the media, economy, government, or other societal institutions. Three, accusing Jews as a people for being responsible for real or imagined wrongdoing committed by a single Jewish person or group, the state of Israel, or even for acts committed by non-Jews. So if you criticize the state of Israel, that's against the this would be against the law. They're trying to combine Judaism with Zionism, folks. 
They're just ple completely blasphemous to the core. And I'll continue on here. This is still underlined, okay? Brand thing, brand new. Additions here. Four, accusing Jews as people or the state of Israel of inventing or exaggerating the Holocaust. Well, okay, like, so, if I, if I, if I, he's like this, if, the, if you criticize the state of Israel for participating in the apartheid regime, that you'd be called anti-Semites. So the Palestinians don't count. They're not, are they Semites? Damn right they are. Many of them are Jews, many of them are Muslims, and many of them are Christians. But they don't care. But they want to say, this particular group is exceptional. The state of Israel is exceptional, which will all revolve around them. And think about it. You know what Israel, Israel in Hebrew means struggling with God. Something to look at. When the when Joseph God changes, we have, the Lord changed his name to Israel. I'll continue on here. It's all underlined here. So five, accusing Jewish citizens of being more loyal to Israel or other alleged priorities of Jews worldwide than to the interests of their own nation. Talk about foreign intervention. How much money do these sons of bitches, excuse my language, from the House and Senate in the state of Florida are owned by these individuals? Think about it. I call this treason, as far as I'm concerned. And prove me wrong. Don't even use that anti-Semitic rhetoric towards me, because you're not going to win. Mark my words. It says here, B, example of the anti-Semitism led to Israel, including one demon de demonizing Israel by, by using the symbols and images associated with the classic anti-Semitism to characterize Israel or Israelis drawing a comparison of contemporary Israeli policy to that of Nazis or blaming Israel for the interreligious or political tensions. Did, did this clown ever, did these idiots read, I bet you these idiots never read Fellows Papers 2-5 through five, written by John Jay on foreign influences nor George Washington's farewell address. Two, applying the double standard to Israel by requiring behavior of Israel that is not expected or demand of any other democratic nation or focusing peace or human rights investigations only on Israel. Three, delegitimizing Israel by denying the Jewish people that their right to self-determination and denying Israel the right to exist. However, criticism of Israel that is similar to criticism toward any other country may not be regarded as anti-Semitic. Semitic, yeah. C. Nothing in this subsection shall be construed to diminish or infringe upon any protection under the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution or the State Constitution. Nothing in this subsection shall be construed to conflict with federal or state discrimination laws. So I see a double speak here, folks. Subse it says here, subsection 2, 7 of 1002.20, Florida statutes is amended to read. 1002.20 K through 12 student and parents' rights. Parents of public school students must receive accurate and timely information regarding their child's academic progress and must be informed of ways that they can help their child to succeed in school. This is like all like um not not mainly underlined, but I'll let you know. Uh, K through 12 students and their parents are afforded numerous statutory rights, including but not to limit to the following: seven non-discrimination all education programs, activities, and opportunities offered by public educational institutions must be made available without discrimination on the basis of race, ethnicity, natural origin, gender, disability, religion, or material uh, material status in accordance with the provisions of 1000.05, section three. So it says religion hasn't been underlined. Okay. And three, it shall take effect upon becoming law. So it looks like you don't have to sign it because um, it's already been a law. It's, it's, it's been passed unanimously. So one thing that's funny about this, folks, is a little too much of a catch-22 with this bill soon to become law. It's null and void with all due respect and in good faith. It does breach 
a declaration of rights. No exception. It is a de facto law. And it's interesting here, I'm going to... And of course, man, the uh, pro-Jewish and pro-Israeli newspapers are climaxing on this thing. Like, oh, we're special. The world should revolve around us. No. They don't. Of course, the Holocaust, not only 6 million people died. They say around 20 and a half million, under 20 and a half million, according to some of the stuff I read. Uh, R.J. Rummel's book, Death by Government, and a few others, but observe responsibly, of course. Now, like when the late great Ellen Zelman from the JPFO, Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership, who was the executive board at the time, wrote in his book, Death by Gun Control, and he talked about that chapter about the Nazis' occupation of Europe. He had in bold print, it wasn't just the Jews, it was everyone else. I saw re- and his man was Jewish by faith, and I respected him dearly. But he, he wants to teach, to teach people the bigger picture. And it's interesting here because the truth of the matter is, it does violate the Declaration of Rights. When they said it doesn't, it's a total hypocrisy, double speak right there. And like it says here, Article 1, Section 2, all, per, all natural persons, female and male alike, are equal before the law and have inalienable rights among which have the right to enjoy and defend life and liberty, to pursue happiness, to be rewarded for industry, and to acquire, possess, and protect property. No person shall be deprived of any right because of race, religion, natural origin, natural origin, or physical dis- physical disability. But see right there, you have inalienable rights, okay? And of course, free speech. Every person may speak, write, and publish sentiment on all subjects, but shall be responsible for the abuse of that right. No, no law shall be passed to restrain or abridge the liberty of speech or the press in all pr- uh, criminal prosecutions and civil actions for def- defamation of the truth may be given in evidence. If the matter charged charge as defamatory is true and was published with good motives, the party shall be acquitted or exonerated. So right there, goes right there, it makes this bill null and void. And it says, it says here about no bill of attainer ex, pa, ex post facto law or law impairing the obligation of the contract shall be passed. So it makes technically, as a consider a prohibited law under Section 10 of the same article, Declaration of Rights. Yes, this bill is repugnant to our Florida Constitution, null and void. And I'm an individual like myself, I'm not going to go witch honey in everything on one particular group, which is absurd. A lot of beautiful people who are Jewish, honorable folks, and you got many of them are just ginos, Jew in name only, a fraud, synagogues of Satan. I think the world should revolve around them. Many of them, many of them are politicians in the U.S. House of Representatives and the Senate. I could, I could, you know who I'm talking about. I don't have to explain myself. This is why this is one of the most, this is a very dangerous bill, my friends. You have the right to criticize. As long as you don't physically harm others. Plain and simple. So the physical threats of beating up on people for what they are, what they believe in, that's totally not acceptable. But criticizing, especially the state of Israel, sorry folks, that's unacceptable. So what's gonna be what's gonna be next? We're gonna we're gonna change we're gonna change the, the our state flag to the Star of David and have the emblem of Florida in the middle of that? No. I'm against it. This thing is no and void. And it's great because I'm gonna I'm gonna nothing I'm gonna add to it as well it is the broad resolution, which was passed May 6, 2003. And it's interesting too because um it says here it's about September, it may have happened about September 11th, and it talked about the USA Patriot Act and domestic domestic security enhancement acts, and they were like disappro like they, they I was nullified. It was passed unanimously, and it's interesting here. It says whereas Broward County, Florida, Broward County, Florida has a long distinguished history of protecting and expanding civil rights and civil liberties of its residents, and um, I can take it down over here. It says here whereas the bill of which is like how many clauses that? One two. Six, seven. Says here, whereas the Bill of Rights of the United States 
Constitution and the Constitution of Florida guarantee those of the United States the following rights, freedom of speech, assembly, and privacy, equality before the law, and the presumption of innocence, access to counsel in the due process, judicial proceedings, and protection from unreasonable search and seizures. Interesting there, when you read about it, the Constitution of Florida, guarantee those rights. That gives you right there. Broward County doesn't have to abide by this. And any other um, counties in Florida, they have a certain resolution. You can say no to this bill that could be something that would become law, regardless if the stand is to sign it or not. And as it goes around here, going the further down down on his um, document. Whereas Broward County has been and remained committed to the protection of civil rights and liberties for all citizens of Broward County, and whereas the, the Board of County Commissioners believe that the threat to any one person's constitutional rights is a threat to the rights of all. So to be very frank, it goes a lot further than the Patriot Act and Domestic Security Enhancement Act. I'm gonna have to really send this one to the Broward County Commissioners with the with a strong letter pertaining to this bill, which is completely unacceptable. This is censorship 101. Free speech protects the minority from the majority. James Madison wrote. Destructive criticism, yes. Physical harm to others, violating their space, regardless, including the Jewish community, is unacceptable. But this one here, this 741, is anti Declaration of Rights. And you folks out there want to defend it? Prove me wrong if you dare. I'm calling you all out Gary Farmer, Sr., or Jr. Senator and House Representative Chip Lamarca, you chose poorly. You breached your oath of office. And if Governor DeSantis decides to sign it, he's an oath breaker too. Plus, contradicting the executive order he signed on suspending Scott Israel for violating his oath of office under Article 2, Section 5 of the same document, the Florida Constitution. All you folks in there, House and Senate, are oath breakers. No exceptions, no defense, no excuses. The truth hurts. Free speech is more important than your feelings. So, I am going to add Israel's uh, basic law in this memo as well so you're supposed to examine this and judge for yourselves I don't see any Bill of Rights or Declaration of Rights under the basic law of the Kazette so I am going to throw that in there too if not just look it up if I forget look it up I had those moments I make errors and wow that is it I am definitely going to don't want to digress on this matter. So the next one here came from AmericanFreePress.net. Unmasking sex change decisions, detransitioning a new challenge. This is by Tilton Adler. And this is a little beginning here, but with some 70% of transgendered young adults now wanting to change back to their original biological gender after changing, detransitioning is a new difficulty being faced by this confused and highly propagandized generation. Masking and unmasking decisions is a constant in life. As free thinking adults, we base our decisions on the information, knowledge, and experience we've gained 
over many years. However, for a growing number of 13 and 24 year old transgender individuals, unmasking some decisions is easier said than done. Entering the upside down world of detransitioning. Detransitioning is defined as changing back to one's original biological gender after having become a tra tra transgendered person. Sometimes, a proportion of individuals who identify as transgender during their teenage years will eventually transition back to the biological gender, often doing so only after they have started dangerous hormone blocking therapies and irreversible medical treatments. Increasingly, psychiatrists and medical doctors are running prescriptions for testosterone and estrogen, hormone blockers that can have a permanent effect with the first dose, especially for children. Doctors are taking the affirmative approach, which is to say they are blindly accepting a new child's naive belief that they are trans, without any real psychological evaluation or clinical observation. Children are being trusted to make life-altering decisions for themselves regarding the chemistry of their bodies years before they are trusted to vote, join the military, or even buy alcohol. One of the results of this reckless acceptance is that those same 13-year-old kids who are now 22-year adults and are deciding they aren't transgender after all, with their bodies, hormones, a wreck, and their emotional state fragile, we have a generation left in biological limbo. What long-term effects the puberty-blocking hormones will have is yet to be determined. Will reproductive abilities be lost? Will these individuals' behavioral and emotional development be altered? The question of the role of government should or shouldn't have in preventing doctors from prescribing such drugs to patients under the age of 18 is just beginning to be debated. Another issue is plaguing the parents and families of teens questioning their own gender, known as rapid onset gender dysphoria, or rogin, rogin. Kids who grew up perfectly content with being a boy or a girl until they became obsessive with stories on the internet of people fixing their problems by deciding they are transgender. Psychologist Dr. Lisa Littman defines this developing epidemic as a type of late onset gender dysphoria where the development of gender dysphoria is observed suddenly during or after puberty in a young adult who would have met criteria and have not had met criteria for transgender in childhood. These adolescents convince themselves that they are transgender only after watching countless hours of YouTube videos in which their transgender, transgender peers use phrases like, I found the real me, or I finally fit in somewhere. The teenagers years are difficult in a full set in a full of self-doubt that and are the years in which we try the many hat on many hats. We are athletic or poetic? Are we shy or outgoing? Are we comfortable in our own skin or do we wish we are physically different? It is an essential time in life during which we begin to figure out who we are. One thing psychologists know about Rogan is that it's seldom a permanent condition. In many cases, teens are expressing themselves as transgender more as a way to be part of a fad than as a long, lifelong commitment. Acting on this fad or transistent condition when a young that then leads to, you guessed it, detransitioning as the age. Many choices we make at age 15 are not right for us as we mature, and fortunately, many such teenage choices don't have lifelong impact. Changing our gender is not one of those choices, however. Many see society's growing fascination with a tiny portion of our population who identify as transgenders as a passing trend. We may only know people who are grappling with gender issues, but most of us do not yet, do not, do not, yet, never before has the internet had a such a monstrous hooking on our youth, and they are acting on these social pressures in growing numbers. It is difficult. But important to realize the difficulty this generation faces now. How much more difficult will it be when, a few years from now, they realize the decision of to transition was made as a still foolish team based on nothing than very convincing propaganda? As they become to this realization and choose to detransition, let this be a time of supporting the unmasking decisions. 
true for sure. Internet, YouTube, doesn't matter. It's got to be utilized wisely. Not be controlled. It's like everything else. Like television. Radio. Listen to bobbleheads. It's like in politics as well. I do find this very absurd about people want to make this decision. And where the hell are the parents? They let them do what the hell they want and let the, let, let the, let the, let the computer and the TV be their babysitter. They're doing things together, put them in the corner. Oh, I got a little more important you can do than watch my kid. Or, or uh, to not teach them, I'll have the, the machines do that for me. That is a key issue, my friend. That is disturbing. This is why we should always be proud of who we are. We're all great, beautiful individuals, including the kids that are out there. Sometimes they got the little fad game, they got the little stereotyping. That has to be like total, like total, like trying to fit in. Even a young man like myself back then was a true maverick. Try to fit about it, never give a damn about that. In due time, so I could care less. Been a, like a loner most of my life. There's people I care about, don't get me wrong. I didn't have to went to these stupid parties in the past. I find it was a turn off. It's like a bunch of her conformists at times. But not everyone goes there are bad people too. So I'm just I'll be very frank. That was hundred percent innocent either. That's some of my actions. But the fact is this, when it comes to this stuff here, you gotta be aware of the mind control game. I'm trying to get our kids to think for them. And they should learn to contemplate themselves. That's why the parents out there and, and choose your honorable masters. I don't mean by being enslaved, by being enlightened, get mentors. Not the damn TV. Or the computer. That, that the stuff is, I call it junk, garbage stuff, garbage material. Give them that proud spirituality for who they are. And I do find this really a turn off. I was watching this, uh, I saw this video from We Are Change, and they talked about a mo- uh, documentary in Inc. called Drag Kids. And I'm like, what the hell is that? Victims, prospects of human sex trafficking, which is possible. That we have to watch out for. We have to safeguard our kids. Nothing more, nothing less. All right. I know I digressed there for a little bit. <laughs> okay, next one here. It was pretty, this one was pretty damn good news here. National Security Archive came out today. It says, National Security Archive joins media groups versus unlimited gag orders. And um, Amicus Brief argue, argues for court review, time limits on, on secrecy, national security letters. Bar versus redacted needs a sunset. About the whole, um, looks like the Mueller case here, if I'm correct. I haven't read it, so I'm just winging it here. It says, National Security Archive, along with 15 other media organizations, filed a friend of, of the court brief on April 29th in a lawsuit, Barr versus Redacted, challenged the FBI's authority, issuing new national security letters without any judicial oversight and under indefinite gag orders. The letter demands business records for, from an array of organizations, national security investigations, and their accompanying gag orders prohibiting the recipient from speaking with anyone the, about the NSL, NSL, which is National Security Letters, often permanently. The amicus, amicus brief argues the courts have put limits on secrecy before by both ordering the government to justify the continued necessity of a non-disclosure provision on an ongoing basis. And requiring a trennial judicial view for non disclosure provision. Sessions versus Twitter Inc. Let's give you one of those. Making bar versus redacted unlimited time frame 
an outlier. The brief also underscores that both the media and the recipients of the NSLs have mutually reinforced the First Amendment interests, contributing to public debate, debate about government surveillance, and that the media roles in this area is unique because NSLs evades. Let me see here. Oop, I just I got screwed up here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, NSLs often evade both public scrutiny and review by the courts. The amicus curiae brief was filed with the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, which is reviewing a lower court decision that held that the FBI's termination procedure are a potential backdrop to protect First Amendment interests. The archive was represented pro bono by Lisa Zickerman of Davis Wright Tremaine and Peter Cal Karanjaw of D.A.L. Piper, the same team that, respect, that represent the archive in the Gina, in the Gina Haspel, Haspel torture cable case. National Security Archive versus CIA, which was forced to release the Haspel torture cables and provide a chronological and black site waterboarding supervised by the future CIA director. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm, I did a show on that, by the way, too. Very interesting. This is why, my friends, you cannot look. You gotta really pay attention. That includes all the Trump supporters out there too. You can be bamboozled. In addition to the archive, the brief was filed on behalf of the American Society of News Editors and the Associated Press ed uh, Media Editors, Association of Alternative News Media, the Associated Press, the Center of Investigative Reporting, the uh, Center for Public Integrity, First Link Media Works Inc., the Hearst Corporation, the Mount Holly Company. The Association of Magazine Media, the New York Times, Online News Association, the Reporters Committee for the Freedom of the Press, Society of Professional Journalists, and the Washington Post. In August 2016, D.C. Court Judge James Bosenberg became the first judge to publicly access the new gag order rules mastered by the USA Freedom of Information Act. He criticizes the NSO specifically faulting several large loopholes in the in new rules that would, in various circumstances, allow the NSL to remain open indefinitely. Wasserberg also faulted the lack of review for large swaths uh, issues of NSLs. In 2014, an intelligence panel set up by President Obama proposing requiring judicial approval for issuing NSL and a side of 2008 Justice Department inspector general report as proof that the 1,900, no, 192,499 NSLs the FBI sent between 2003 and 2006 were extensively misused. The expert intelligence panel noted we are unable to identify a principal reason why NSLs should be issued by FBI officials when the section 215 orders orders and orders of pen register, register and trap Trap and trace surveillance must be issued by the, for, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, or FISA, FISA, going to suggest a transition should take place as soon as re reasonably possible. And then FBI Director James Comey spoke out against the suggestion. Guys, a chump anyway. Sorry. There have been many. There have been several victories against NSLs over the years. In addition, Sessions versus Twitter, Inc. and and. Um, in reference, National Security Letters number 16-518, the 2004 case Doe versus Ashcroft challenged the constitutionality of the letters specifically, their non-disclosure provisions and the resulting related ruling issued by Judge Victor Moreo found that the NSL violates the Fourth Amendment, NSL violates the Fourth Amendment, a list of revisions of the USA Patriot Act, allowing for greater judicial review and clarifications for non-disclosure causes. In 2015, Nicholas Merrill, who ran the small internet company Clix, became the first person allowed to fully disclose the contents of the NSL he received from the FBI in 2004. Thanks to a multi-year court battle, Merrill's gag order was lifted and revealed that in 2004, the FBI demanded Merrill turn over all physical mail addresses, email addresses, and internet protocol addresses associated with one customer's account as well as telephone, billing records, and anything else considered to be electronic communications transitional records. The NSL also demanded cell tower location data and, and any screen names or, or online nicknames associated with the customer in question. 
also director of the National uh, Director of National Intelligence, most recent statistical transparency report on the use of FISA orders and the national security letters during the 2008. During the calendar year 2018 shows that there were 10,235 requests filled for 38,872 subscribers' information last year. For more information on these letters, visit the archive Cyber Vault, which contains all six Director Intelligence Successful and Transparency reports, and you can link that up yourself. So it's pretty cool. It has everything right here. And that came out May 9th, 2018. Tells you all about the documents right here so you can see it for yourselves. And you know what? Pretty damn cool, I would say. And um, hey, freedom of information, my friend, FOIA, I support it. So it'll be interesting about the whole redacted thing. And I know too, a lot of, a lot of the bills, a lot of the stuff from the Miller Report too, I guess it's the Miller Report that has been um, redacted. It's just very interesting. And um, one of the things you gotta look at with that whole with the whole thing. Because the fact is, some of this redacted information on the Miller report is still an ongoing thing. So and that's why with Roger Stone, there's a there's a claim that, hey, we gotta get the, the the prosecutor the truck on prosecutor attorney don't wanna give the unredacted information on the Miller report, which he has the right. If not, he's not gonna get a fair trial. And here's the thing, friends, like him, Roger Stone or not, if you if you if you if you if you don't if you if you don't support his right to fair trial, yours can be next. So this is why the whole thing needs a sunset. Hey, you know what? That'll be fine by me. And that's pretty cool. So interesting stuff here. Uh, and so the National Art Security Archives crew did it chose wisely. I'm supporting this cause, and hopefully people will see the bigger picture and support it as well. Transparency has to be, government works for us, not vice versa. No ends, ifs, or buts. Plain and simple. And that is it. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download the share through social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, if you said something that's interesting you want to check out, whatever you do, please send your correspondences with decorum. Plus, I will, I will leave all my footnotes, plus social media and email, email contact on my speaker page, all right? Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the Maniac Resistance helped the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love. And may your guardian spirits be with you.